Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial on my Orc Painter Nerd channel. In this tutorial we're going to be heavily weathering a Impulsor tank in a custom Space Marine chapter called the Iron Raptors that was conceptualized by myself and a great hobbyist called Brian. The tutorial is going to be sponsored by a great company called Stronghold Games in Hull. Stronghold Games in Hull is a fantastic hobby store that sells a multitude of different products ranging from miniatures, card games and anything in between. So if you're in Hull, go up and pop along and have a great day at uh, Stronghold Games and uh, I'm sure you'll have a great time there. Okay, as always guys, this is going to be a very long tutorial so please get comfortable grab yourselves a nice hot drink or maybe an ice cold beer and we'll get started with the tutorial here I'm showing you that I've kept two parts separate from the impulsor that makes it much easier to paint the tank with these parts not on there so one is the front cupola with the uh, machine gun and then the second is the rear hatch plate so um, try not to glue those onto the tank before uh, painting. Okay, now we're going to start to prime the tank. I'm using Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer White. I get asked the question, um, why do I use Alclad primers? Well, the reason I use Alclad primers is because, in my personal opinion, they're pretty much the best primers on the market. They dry to an ultra-thin, smooth finish and leave a great tooth for a subsequent layers of paint to adhere to but more importantly they're very very tough because it's a lacquer primer uh, the properties of the primer is very very tough and hard wearing and that's what you want on your miniatures but there is some caveats guys so basically this is really harmful if inhaled so please make sure you're well ventilated and wearing a respirator and also you have to have a good quality airbrush with PTFE solvent proof packing seals please check your manufacturer's website to make sure that you uh, are aware whether the rubber seals or the PTFE seals because if the rubber seals it will damage your airbrush if you're unable to use Alclad uh, primers guys then the next best thing is probably Badger's Steinal Res uh, primers and they can be used in any airbrush and they're much uh, safer on the lungs but with any product I still recommend you wear a respirator. I'm priming at about 20 psi and I'm just as you can see getting a really thin coat of that Alclad white onto the miniature and uh, as you can see it goes down ultra smooth on the plastic parts. Okay guys, so here I'm using a new product and it's Mission Models Olive Drab 026. Now it's very important to note uh, with Mission Models uh, paints is that you need to buy the mix additive and the thinner. The paint dries really, really matte without the matte add, uh, sorry, the uh, mix additive, the polyurethane mix additive and you also need thinner to thin it down a little in the airbrush it is a very thick heavy paint but it still sprays out the airbrush absolutely beautifully and it self levels really really well so you're actually going to want to spray it onto the model very wet which is unlike most uh, paints and uh, don't worry if it's looking too wet on the surface as I say it will settle down and shrink on the model um, but as I say I've added about 10% thinner you don't need much thinner at all uh, to paint ratio and for every say 20 drops of paint I add 
two to three drops of the poly added uh, mixture which has given me a, a high satin finish um, if this sounds too much work for you guys or you're new to airbrushing and you don't really want to mess about mixing paints then I'd recommend grabbing an US olive drab colour from AK Interactive and their airbrush paints are ready uh, to spray straight out of the bottle but as it happens I actually enjoyed using the Mission Models paint in this video uh, regarding PSI on this I'm about 20 PSI but you can go as low as 15 PSI from what I'm aware and um, you're probably going to want to spray two uh, layers of this paint to get a fully 100% uh, even coat um, but uh, it sprays really nice Here you can see that I've uh, picked up the paste uh, spraying and how quickly and easily the paint goes onto the model using this Mission, Mo Mission Models paints. Um, and yeah, it uh, works really well. Here you can see I'm just giving it a second thin layer on top of the first layer just to make sure that it's a fully solid uh, colour. Now we're going to highlight using Olive Drab Highlights by AK Interactive which is AK136. As you can see here I'm trying to aim for all the centre of the panels but I'm trying to leave behind all of the recesses with the original uh, olive drab colour from Mission Models so aim for the centre of the panels and you'll get a really nice colour transition where the shadows are and where our new highlights begin
filters are a fantastic product to add to your miniatures that will actually break up the overall color on your miniature and add an extra layer of depth. Now it's not like a wash where a wash would go on the whole surface of a miniature and it would start to really stain in the recesses and it would also uh, leave stains and uh, watermarks on the um, surface of your model. A filter is much much more subtle. Think of it like uh, a very low opacity paint. Um, what it will do is it will leave slight staining behind or slight colour I should say behind in certain areas of the tank where you want to emphasise. The colour we've got here is a very very nice yellowy green colour and that's going to bring some really nice um, colour to the tank that's lacking with the olive drab I feel. So as you can see I'm going to go around the whole of the tank with this and I'm going to pay certain attention to more areas than not. Basically anywhere that you want some colour to pop like on the corners of those light areas I might add a little bit more. Uh, you just want to play around with it. You can play around with filters for hours and hours and hours guys. Uh, adding bits here and bits there and um, using different coloured filters to actually bring out different colours on the uh, vehicle just to break up panel to panel. Uh, but uh, I didn't spend too long doing this if I'm completely honest. We're going to add some decals and it's very important that we prepare the surface of the model um, for the decals that we're going to place down. So I'm going to use some Vallejo Metal Colour Gloss Varnish. Now as you can see instantly spraying the surface of the model is going to start looking slick and wet and that's the perfect surface for decals to adhere to. Uh, so I'm only spraying the areas where I know I'm going to put the decals. I don't need to spray the whole of the vehicle with a gloss varnish. Uh, as I say, just the areas where I know I'm going to place a decal. And here I'm going to place the decal down onto the miniature. Uh, sorry if my hand gets in the way as I place it down onto the actual tank. Uh, but as you can see, this really cool decal is from Green Stuff World. And they sell... A set of two sheets of decals uh, one with loads of numbers on and the other decal has loads of pinup girls and other really cool decals and uh, I bought these and uh, I highly recommend you buy them yourselves guys if you want to add some cool pinup style decals to your vehicles After allowing the decals to thoroughly dry out on the surface, which is very, very crucial guys, you don't want any water left underneath any of those decals before you spray them with satin varnish. I'm using satin varnish for two uh, reasons. One, to get rid of that horrid slick gloss look, and two, it's going to help protect the decals on the surface of the miniature. 
and as you can see instantly it's dulled down that horrible gloss look and that uh, satin varnish is really going to protect the decals from peeling off or being scratched off. Now we're going to do a pin wash on the vehicle using Brown Wash for Green Vehicles by MIG Ammo. It's really important to note guys that you can do this one of two ways. You can do it on a satin surface which I prefer to work on or you can do it on a gloss surface. If you do it on a gloss surface the pin wash will work even easier for you as the natural capillary action of the brush is working unison with a slick gloss finish. I prefer to do it on a satin uh, finish because I like to leave staining behind uh, on, the ve on the vehicle that wouldn't be left behind on a gloss surface. So I think having subtle staining left behind on the vehicle looks a little bit more realistic in my opinion. But as I say, some people prefer to do it over gloss, some people prefer to do it over satin. It's entirely up to you guys which you prefer to do it over. But uh, as you can see, I'm just literally touching the brush on all of those panel lines and the uh, capillary action of the brush is drawing that wash right into all those nooks and crannies. After allowing the wash to dry, I'm coming in with Vallejo Game Air Charred Brown. You can also use Games Workshop's Rhinox Hide, which are pretty much the same colour uh, if you don't have charred brown. But as you can see, I've got a little bit of blister sponge from a miniature uh, pack, and uh, I'm just ever so lightly touching on the surface of the miniature on any area where I think chips would naturally form. So that's on all of the extreme sharp edges of the panels where uh, the paint would slowly wear away and also where I think rust would start to form.
here I'm using a Rosemary & Co Series 22 Kalinsky Sable Zero brush. It's really important that you use a good quality brush with a very very fine point to do uh, scratches on your vehicles you want them to be as thin as you possibly can get um, I mean I've got a camera in my face and it really doesn't help me doing such delicate fine work but you basically want to have the most finest point on the tip of your brush and as I'm illustrating here I roll the bristles of the brush into an ultra fine point and I just get some really subtle scratches using that charred brown colour on the surface of the vehicle Here we're going to use some AK Interactive Artist Weathering Pencils. Now these are like artist watercolour pencils and you can activate them by literally dipping them in water as you'll see that I've got in this tiny little pot here. Uh, I've got just some regular water and we're just dipping the uh, nib of the pencil into the water and we can start getting some really nice subtle weathering effects uh, I'm using the sand color here I believe and we're just going around some of the extreme edges and creating highlights and also areas of interest that I think uh, a, a nice highlight would look good on uh, so as you can see all of those really extreme top surfaces of panels are going to look really great with that on uh, now we're going to come in with the sepia pencil and we're going to start creating chips uh, sorry uh, rust streaks not chips so as you can see I'm going round the extreme uh, edge of that panel there uh, where I want some rust streaks to begin from I've dipped the brush in the water but at some stages I actually leave the brush uh, sorry the pencil dry and we create streaks I find creating streaks with this pencil way easier than actually using a paintbrush with paint uh, the reason I find it easier to use the pencil is that you're actually accustomed to using pens and pencils from a very 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 early age so the actual motion of creating those streaks is super natural and easy to do
Now we're going to do another panel line wash using AK Interactive's enamel wash light rust. Now it's really important to note that with these enamel products you can't thin them with water. You need to use turpentine uh, or uh, mineral spirits. I'm using odorless thinner here that from AK Interactive uh, to thin it down if I've got it in an area where I don't want it. Uh, but in general this uh, light uh, rust wash is very very thin and doesn't need diluting at all it can be placed straight onto the model Now we're going to paint all of the metallic areas on the vehicle using Vallejo Metal Colour Gunmetal Grey. This is a fantastic airbrush colour and it goes down super smooth through the airbrush. But as you can see it hand brush paints beautifully as well. It's very very thin uh, so it won't clog up any uh, details like some acrylic metallic paints may because they're quite thick. Uh, but it pretty much gives one coat coverage. Now we're going to dry brush all the metallics with Vallejo Game Air Silver. The reason we do this is it's going to make all of those sharp edges of all those metallic areas pop and look really good. Here I'm adding some AK Interactive Light Rust Wash as we did earlier on on the tank but this time we're concentrating on all the metallic areas of the vehicle.
There's some really large vents on this tank and I thought it'd be really cool to actually add some soot and some soot streaks. So here I'm getting super close to the vehicle, uh, about half an inch away, maybe even less than that. And I'm just creating some really subtle uh, soot effects, just feathering the airbrush trigger back ever so slightly. Uh, and this will just add another cool effect to the tank that we've been building up so far. The very last effect that we're going to add to the tank is oil and grease stain mixture from MIG Productions. Don't get MIG Productions uh, mixed up with MIG Ammo. Uh, the MIG Productions is actually under the AK Interactive umbrella of products. It's really important to note that I actually sat in varnish the whole of the vehicle after I finished every single effect apart from this last effect. So I sat in varnished it and then we're coming back in with this grease uh, stain mixture. It's going to leave a really glossy uh, look and an oily look which you want from the effect. So less is more, don't add too much of this effect because it can ruin the look of the vehicle quite easily. I forgot to show myself painting all the lights on the vehicle but basically I painted them all white then I come in with Vallejo Model Air Moon Yellow and painted the lights and uh, then I added a wash of Cassandori Yellow by Games Workshop. And here you can see our completed vehicle. I really hope you pick some tips and tricks up along the way here, especially with the weathering side of things. There's some people are afraid to weather their vehicles, but it's probably the most fun you can actually have painting. Just going wild, creating narrative on the tank of where you think uh, rust would form, where you think a chip would be on the tank, tell a story, uh, with the weathering on your vehicles well anyway guys i really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button but even better still leave a comment in the comments field down below and let me think let me know what you think of the tutorial uh, lastly i want to say a huge thank you uh, to brian ross uh, for this great uh, iron raptors project and also my uh, youtube channel sponsors uh, stronghold games in hull Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.